Gotta say, they've exceeded expectation on this one. What's up, Universe, and welcome back to the web's first must-see comic and nerd culture show. Welcome to Comic Universe, guys. I'm your host, as always, the kingpin of comic culture, C-Dubs, and guys, I'm riding solo on this video, guys, and it's been a couple of days, and I really honestly just had to give it a couple of days to really absorb this game. I know everybody was rushing out to kind of get just a kind of review on it, but I kind of wanted to go a little more than just a, a simple review. What I really felt about the game, what I, how, you know... The, the notes that it did well, the notes that it didn't do well, you know, exactly, you know, your feelings, all of the above. And a few of us here in the office have actually played it, some of us have beat it, and some of us still are kind of working their way through it. And to be honest, then, what we're looking at here is actually when I first got the game, the first, like, half an hour, 45 minutes of me uh, kind of streaming the game, um, nothing special, nothing too crazy, but we're just going to kind of give our two cents, if you will, as to what exactly, you know, how's the game and everything. So, uh, as we all know, this is an exclusive to PlayStation 4, unfortunately, for any Xbox fans out there. Um, and it, it might be kind of, you know, to be, you know, should we should have seen this coming, to be honest with you. Um, A, you know, PlayStation has been killing it uh, for the longest, Plus, they're obviously owned by Sony, which, um, you know, Marvel and slash Disney do have a relationship with Sony um, due to the Spider-Man franchise, if you will. And it wouldn't, um, honestly, it wouldn't blow my mind or, or seem too weird if this was a part of the negotiations, if you will. Um, and I think this is a win-win on both halves, if you will. Now, with this particular game, as you guys can see, it's absolutely beautiful. The graphics are, are absolutely stunning. I'm not going to get it into any of the techno, techno mumbo-jumbo on, you know, the exact 1080p and high-def 4K or any of that jazz. You know, you guys can kind of see it for yourself. This is actually on just a regular PlayStation 4, and it still looks amazing. Obviously, if you have a PlayStation um, Pro, if you will, um, it's definitely going to be that much better. Um, but it's really cool, as you guys just saw there, um, he does have full motion and able to encapsulate, you know, the emotion of Spider-Man with his eyes and his suit, how they kind of move, kind of like how the MC, uh, uh, MCU Spider-Man's eyes move. Um, so they were really fortunate to kind of show that to us and, and kind of, it's just absolutely amazing what this game has kind of done. It has created its own universe, if you will, its own Marvel Universe um, in such a small amount of time, uh, just going with just the Spider-Man lore and everything, it has taken pretty much everything you know and love and come to expect from a Spider-Man game or just from Spider-Man's story in general and kind of made it their own all at the same time. Uh, characters have their own uh, kind of sort of pseudo feel and look to them, but yet they don't stray too far away from the norm, meaning obviously the source material as in comic books. Now, uh, you know, obviously, again, this is when I first put the game in. The, literally, this is my first time touching it. Um, so it, things may seem a little wonky initially, but I can 100% tell you guys that if you guys haven't played it yet, once you jump into it, it will feel a little wonky, um, as you guys can see. But it's something you quickly adapt to. It's something that you really, it starts to feel organic, his movements and, and all of the movements, because you kind of... Especially if you understand Spider-Man. I mean, if you were, I guess, a hermit and you've lived under a rock all these years and didn't know what to expect, and if you've never played a Spider-Man game prior to this, um, I can definitely see you maybe having somewhat of a hard time with it. Um, you know, the movements through the air and bouncing off walls, running up walls, things of that nature. But again, if you have any common sense and you have truly, you know, know the character, it's, it's quickly, easily obtained on how to do you know, basically all of his movements. And as you progress within the game, getting your power-ups, new suits, and things to that level, um, and, and um, you know, learning new move sets and, and string together different types of combos and things to that nature, that too gets really, really easy. Um, I went from dying a few times just from stupid errors and mistakes to it becoming literally second nature for me to know when, you know, a hit was going to be coming or when to dodge. And I don't want to say that it, it, if you become perfect to the game, which um, I don't think by any matter, uh, stretch of the imagination, that that is the case. Um, but honestly, I do feel that this game pulls off a similar combat 
to, let's say, the Gotham universe, if you will, the Arkham franchise, but much different, where Batman feels a little heavy and armored up and powerful in his movements, Spider-Man still ha feels that power, but his agility and his slenderness to his body add to it all. Literally, you're bouncing off walls, and, and in, it's not too confusing. Now, from time to time, the camera can pose a slight problem, but nothing that's not, you know, easily, you know, adjusted to, if you will. Now, let's talk a little bit about the story. So, it kicks off, um, basically, Spider-Man is putting the kingpin out of business, if you will. And Kingpin, right off the bat, tells him, hey, this is the biggest mistake you've ever made in your life. Taking me off the streets is, sure, it's going to change, you know, crime levels, but what's going to come after me could possibly and will be far worse. And that's exactly kind of how the story starts. We start off with the Kingpin and his goons, and we quickly start moving into the Demon Gang. And I don't want to give anything away. I'm going to try to be as absolutely spoiler-free as possible with this, guys. Because I think this is a game everyone needs to experience. Now, there are very few things about the story and the game itself that I don't like. Um, and it's not so much that I don't like. They're just... Well, well one of them is really I don't like. And that is Mary Jane. Um, and I'm going to come across like a chauvinistic pig here, and it's truly not my intent, nor am I. Um, I don't, you know, think everybody has to have that, you know, girls have to have that Barbie doll look. In fact, I, I prefer my women, you know, curvy, if you will. Um, but as a lo lifetime Spider-Man fan, um, and from everything from the comics to every animated incarnation I have seen in its entirety um, to date, you know, and all of the movies, obviously, and, and even some of the movies, uh, a lot of the movies, I should say, got Mary Jane wrong. Now, Mary Jane is supposed to be that hope for all of us readers, basically, the hope that you will get the girl. You know, Spider-Man ha has had his fair share of girls, um, but it's generally Spider-Man who gets those girls, um, with the exception, obviously, um, of two, the two main ones most people, or, you know, identify with, with Spider-Man being obviously, um, uh, Mary Jane being the biggest. Now, Mary Jane is supposed to be that supermodel-esque type girl. Now, she doesn't have to be a model. She doesn't have to be an actress in the story or anything to that nature. But she has to look far above and far out of the reach of some average Joe or below average Joe in the case of Peter Parker being able to obtain, at least from the status quo of general, you know, the general audience, if you will. You know, she's supposed to be that, when we look at her, Okay, it's supposed to give us hope because we as the readers read Spider-Man as if we are Spider-Man. You know, he is us. Even though he has superpowers, there's something about him, um, clearly, that speaks to us. And it's usually in his Peter Parker persona. And Mary Jane is with him for Peter Parker, not for Spider-Man. Unlike, you know, your black cats of the world and, and any other superhero, um, quote-unquote, girlfriend or you know, girl of the week he's had. Mary Jane loves him for Peter, essentially. And she's, you know, one of the first things, if not the very first thing, she ever tells us, you know, in the comic books, you know, basically, as you just hit the face of Tiger, you just hit the jackpot. You know, it's because she knows she's out of his league, if you will. And in this particular game, again, I'm not degrading women in any sense of the matter it's just the characterization of that particular character okay it's supposed to be so above spider-man peter parker and in this case i feel she is very much so the girl next door she is um and i'm not even talking about you know her working for the bugle in this particular story which is the only spoiler i'm really going to try to get uh or get into i'm gonna try to stay away from everything once again guys but you know, her being like, you know, she kind of looks like your best friend's sister, if you will. Like, and I, and I know how this is going to come across, and I promise you that's not the intent here. But it's just a characterization of that, their relationship. It's, it's how it always was meant to be. 
And I, th I myself, as a comic book fan, first and foremost, and a fan of these of all of these characters, that I, I just I'm not a big fan of when the characterizations of these characters. I'm, I think I've said character like three thousand times there change you know the fundamentals of that character is what makes them so great you know i i'm o i'm open to you know changing of race and you know i'm open to changing of you know creed i'm up you know their jobs things like that even some of their aesthetics can change you know you can have different color suits and different color hair and all of that that's fine but part of what makes mary jane so good and so great is that she is out of his league in terms of physical appearance and um she's not ugly by any stretch of the matter in the game she just literally looks like the girl next door she is you know like i said before your best friend's sister you know that you had to get permission for before you could even ask her out on a date type of thing and it just kind of took me out for a second and her missions yes uh you do play as her here and there throughout the game they do kind of take you out of the excitement of the game but it does add to the story mystery and lore of the game so there is like a, a give and a take when you do take on the role of mj which is kind of cool because in in my recollection it is the very first time you've ever played as mj now it's nothing to write home to mom about you're not like literally saving the world or you know beating up on bad guys per se uh, but you do get to play slightly as her now this game is filled with easter eggs from top to bottom some of which you know are gaming easter eggs some of which are marvel comics easter eggs and some of which are actually just cool little easter eggs for new yorkers if you will just you know when, when exploring the city it is so incredibly detailed and it's almost or it, i shouldn't say almost but it is very authentic not everything in the game with some of the locations are exactly the way they are but it is probably the closest we've ever gotten to a full-on match to any city let alone new york city if you will so it is really cool that they were able to do that um, and it is something that I hope um, that they kind of expand on, if you will. Um, you know, they don't just kind of, with so many characters within New York City and Marvel, that maybe this engine will be able to continue with maybe some other characters uh, down the line, hopefully, fingers crossed. Now, this game also, the story, the like I said, is also, there's some seriously touching moments, and they take some liberties and do some things that even in the comics they are not really known for doing okay they're they they tend to stay away from some of the tropes that here in the game they're willing to kind of do and what's so amazing is they seem to be creating some sort of their own universe which um jay will have a video coming out kind of top touching more on that but they do seem to be setting up something much greater than itself if you will um spider-man again he moves like spider-man all the you know spider-man quips and quotes if you will are there the talking to himself the the funny haha -ha, and sometimes stupid jokes that peter is known for doing to you know not just infuriate um his enemy or his opponent you know but also just to entertain himself because in a lot of ways, Spider-Man is, I mean, he could really wipe the floor with a lot of people. There's so many times he himself as a character has to hold back that I'm sure that a big part of, you know, his focal point and him, you know, mocking his opponents sometimes really do come because of sheer boredom. I, I, it's at least the way I've always taken it and it's it's here all of those quotes if you will are there definitely now guys really quick as you can see here i'm you know initially off the bat i was having some trouble kind of adjusting to everything coming at you so fast it's like push this button push that button flip this way flip that way and you know eventually i can 100 percent tell you guys that you quickly adapt it becomes fluent and and you can take on bigger hordes than what you see here plus with the addition of some of the suits now as you obtain these suits um not every suit has its own unique ability most of them do um, but there are a few suits that don't but all of the suits for the most part have quote unquote a a super ability and or power or skill if you will that come with that suit and what's really awesome about this game if you haven't played it already 
is just because, let's say you don't like the aesthetics of that suit, or you have, you have a particular suit that you do like, or let's say you're a traditionalist and want to keep the authentic Spider-Man look, okay, from the 616 universe, you can do that and still swap out one of the powers that you've obtained from one of the other costumes. So they're not, the powers are not costume specific, meaning you do have to get the costume to get that ability slash quote power, but once you've obtained that suit, you can switch back to a different suit, okay, and then swap in that particular character's uh, power, if you will. Uh, for instance, one of which, um, unfortunately, I don't think I have any video clip of it, is Spider-Punk. When you obtain the Spider-Punk um, outfit, you can again switch back to the normal Spider-Man as you see here. But what you can do now is when you are in danger or your superpower meter fills up, you can push in both L1, I'm sorry, L3 and R3, and he'll jump into the air, pull out his guitar, strum it really loud, and cause like a vibration effect, which will blast back any enemies that are surrounding you. And like I said, sometimes there are huge hordes of people beating the ever-living snot out of you. And if you ever do feel, you know, overwhelmed, simply by pushing that button, boom, pushes them back, gives you a second to breathe, and maybe change up the strategy. Another really cool technique is you are able to slow down the camera a bit um, and maybe aim a particular direction to save yourself or swing a different direction in the city or to get out of dodge or to maybe hit a particular opponent. Um, this is a feature that I found myself not using until very recently, later in the game. Um, but it is definitely one that is definitely helpful. Now, one of the cool things that I do want everybody to know about is that there are these... Uh, there are a few different side quests that can get a little repetitive. Now, within these side quests, one thing we all understand as gamers is that every open world game has these side quests that tend to be either feel irrelevant or just be overbearingly repetitive and things that you just don't want to deal with. But I can tell you that most of these, if not all of these, do pay out in some form or fashion. There are, one of the side quests are Spider-Man has tons of these backpacks strung up all over the city with different trinkets in it. And as you collect them, you're not necessarily telling a cohesive story, but you are giving little pieces to this, the puzzle, basically shedding some light on Spider-Man's eight-year career, if you will, um, ever from uh, the first one I got, which was the backpack with uh, him and Mary Jane's first date, the menu from the restaurant he took her to, um, all the way down to him winning a science award and explaining, you know, why he couldn't accept the winnings from it. And, you know, even like all the way down to his dental hygiene, like, you know, that he keeps a backpack with, you know, toothpaste and toothbrush somewhere in the city, you know, because he doesn't have the time always to freshen up and you know, in times where he might need to, you know, get to work or get to school or get to a date or whatever the case may be, he has this out there to freshen himself up. So it's really cool that they jump this far into, you know, just kind of building this world for us. And it's done really quickly. Um, there are also, like, these, um, you do go back to your um, roots with your, with your camera, if you will, taking, instead of pictures of yourself, there are sightseeing, I call them sightseeing missions, if you will, you kind of go around town and take pictures of landmarks and, and things to that nature, and, you know, as you complete them, you'll earn a trophy, but there are these also secret ones that are not going to show up on the um, screen, if you will. Uh, so these are, this is one that, you know, randomly, if you see something, I guess this is advice to you guys out there. Uh, for instance, if you see something that looks like it could be, you know, something worthy of taking a picture if you were sightseeing there, take a picture of it. The odds are it might be one of the secret um, landmarks that you take a picture of. Now, if you do happen to collect them all, you will get a special secret suit. Um, again, I don't want to spoil too, too much, um, but one of which I will give everybody a hint, um, is the grave of, um, Ben Parker, which really did touch me when I found it. Um, and I also will say that there are different times throughout the game that, um, even after you find his grave and, and take a snapshot of it, keep going back there because the area will change from time to time and, and there's some really touching moments when you do the go th back there, if you will. Um, but yeah, man, overall, this game is absolutely amazing. It is 
unprecedented. This is by far the best Spider-Man game to date. Um, now, it doesn't do anything super crazy to reinvent the wheel. It basically takes a lot of what other games have done that were, were good and great ideas and kind of does it one better, if you will, and smoother and just makes you really feel. And for instance, like we're seeing right here, this just is such a classic you know, imagery. It get, brings back to not just homecoming with him lifting the building off of him, um, but obviously that uh, famous art cover of the you know the same story in which that was taken from uh in the comics so it's just little things like that that just kind of really are are phenomenal and what else i really admire about this game is that there are some updates to it um that are really interesting for instance uh uh jonah jameson he is no longer at the bugle which i know is uh, at first i was like this is not cool at all but, you know, print industry is, you know, kind of dying, sadly, to some degree. And, you know, he moved on and he basically is now podcasting, if you will. Um, I don't know why he couldn't do both, but hey. Um, so every once in a while, Jonah Jameson will pop up, you know, as an audio um, clip while playing. And you're just li literally hearing... Jonah continuing his rant against Superman or Spider-Man and, and trying to, you know, discredit people that are out literally going, you know, he saved my life, you know, he stopped that bank robbery or he, he saved me from being kidnapped. And then he's like, did you ever think he set the kidnapping up and then he'll end the podcast there and, and things to that nature. So it was really cool to kind of get that vibe from him and, and for him to be so in the game. And I want to kind of alluded to kind of feeling like in dark night, how the Joker would randomly pop up and just most of the time add to the story very rarely take away but it's kind of the same feeling you kind of get some chuckles you kind of get like man that guy's a bastard moments and things like that um, which are really it's really entertaining um overall guys i would give this a solid five out of five uh, i would definitely say this is a must buy for any superhero fan comic book fan marvel fan or video game fan um and if you're just a good fan of a good story and and to, i challenge to anyone who don't think that video games are a form of art or entertainment or, or value in terms of a story play this game as well as play the last god of war i promise you you will change your mind i i 100 promise you that now in this particular game too guys you're gonna get probably all in all maybe about 60 solid hours of gameplay but there is a lot of replay value especially when you're dealing with open world games uh, you tend to kind of just want to explore so guys this is going to keep you guys occupied for a while but i didn't want to you know, wait too, too long before kind of giving you guys our thoughts on this. Um, I can tell you both me and Dr. J, man, we are absolutely in love with it. Um, and Tyler, uh, basically DPZ, he's kind of taken a, it a little slower approach on the game. It's, uh, and he doesn't kind of want any too many spoilers. So also to him, uh, hopefully he watches this video, um, since he's not on it, you know, in, Trust me, dude, you're going to want to get into this. And, and I understand the situation, but you're going to love it. Um, even if you're just kind of watching the, the story play on, on YouTube or something like that. Um, or maybe you'll come over and we'll fucking play, if you will. Anyway, guys, so, yeah, guys, get this game. It's phenomenal. Let us know in the comments below what you guys are thinking. What do you guys hope they do with this uh, universe next? Did you guys beat it? Did you guys like it? And, guys, I will say there are some... Easter eggs, or I should say post credit scenes that I want you guys to be on the lookout for because uh, we'll probably talk about them a little later, guys. All right, so until next time, guys, don't forget to like, share, and subscribe on this video, guys. And until next time, I'll see you in the universe. Peace.